Um, and uh, of course, the you know the obvious question from a new ham is, what is the best radio? And uh, we we've all got our opinions, but I think the answer I always give is it's the radio that you have with you. Um, and a lot of us can't even think about leaving the house without grabbing the uh, the HT. Um, some of us would prefer to to grab a um, a cell phone. So you'll get what you have here, and I'll show you. Uh, let's see if I can. You grab yourself. One of these. There we go. Grab yourself one of these. Can everybody see? Everybody hear me now? Yeah. This is a phone, an iPhone with a um, charger and a UHF radio on the back, and uh, SMA antenna, and it's kind of a cool novelty item. But there's nothing really special about it. It's a phone and a radio put together. And that's the concept behind um, network radio. What can you do with a radio you already have in your pocket? All right, let's switch back over here. So um, let's start with defining what network radio is. That is the uh, loose term that's going to be applied to anything that's really using Wi-Fi or existing cell phone infrastructure. Um, you're thinking about apps, walkie-talkies, if you want to call it that. Um, something, I don't know if you guys have heard about any of these, but I'm going to go through the quick brief, whether it's a Peanut app or a Zello app or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure that you've come across them. Um, this differs from radio because it relies on cellular and Wi-Fi, right? Um, it's similar to ham radio in practice and procedure, but depending on what aspect you're using, you may or may not have a license. Uh, that's the big thing that a lot of people can't get over. Is it real radio? Mm, it's not real ham radio, but it does use RF to communicate. So, you know, make your own judgment there. Um, I want to take a moment and kind of differentiate it from Nextel because Nextel, if you guys remember, used that special 800 megahertz network. It was peer-to-peer, -peer, had sub-audible tones. Uh, network radio is going to rely on data through any available channel. All right, is everybody on board so far? Feel free to jump in with any questions. Um, it's not a complicated subject, but I'm not great at explaining it, so <laughs> feel free to raise your hand or jump in whenever you want. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Who's going to be interested in this? Um, as hams, I think we all have plenty of things that we can kind of look down our nose at and proclaim it's not real. Uh, I don't want us to be so quick to to dismiss this. Uh, it's it has its place, you know. It kind of has a niche audience, but it has its place, um, and it's something that Jen and I actually used fairly extensively before she decided to get her license. So. Maybe there's something to be said for network radio's role in growing uh, ham radio as a hobby. Um, there are plenty of people who face antenna restrictions. Um, maybe they have an HOA. Uh, maybe they don't have the space to do it. Maybe they have kind of an overzealous uh, administration that that doesn't let them. Um, oddly enough, a lot of people from England have this. I guess there's not as much space as we have here. Um, anybody who, who may be thinking that radio communication is too much of a hassle, they don't want to get involved with the exams or the equipment cost or becoming licensed or so forth and so on, um, there is kind of a perceived hassle of becoming a ham. Uh, anybody who wants to try before they buy might be interested in network radio. Um, We'll talk about event management because there's uh, a lot of use for those little walkie-talkies, the, the FRS, uh, to some extent the GMRS, two-way radios. They're great tools, but they're um, they're pretty easily open to, to ne'er-do-wells. Um, so if you want something with a little more security, network radio may be available for you. You can kind of password protect your, uh, your conversations there. Um, anybody looking to overthrow a government 
do we have any of those in the crowd? Uh, so for the people in Iraq, we had a lot of uh, use for that. Some of the people in Hong Kong are using or were using network radio. Um, they use an app called Fire Chat. Uh, it's now been discontinued, but it was a uh, it was basically a, a mesh technology. Uh, it used uh, Bluetooth, ad hoc Wi-Fi, Apple's uh, multi-peer framework. And it was all based on apps. That's exactly what it was. If you want to call it voice over IP, you can do it that way if it helps you uh, think about it. But you're, you're looking at peer-to-peer -peer or peer-to-multi-peer uh, communications there. And, uh, of course, anybody like me, I just enjoy talking. Um, and it's, you know, that's kind of one of the things about ham radio is that you can always find somebody to talk to and always have an interesting conversation um, because it isn't, ham radio just a bunch of people talking about ham radio anyway and um that's exactly exactly what i use it for a lot of times um i want to move on to emergency communication uses uh kq9p and i spoke about this about whether or not we could use it um kind of put this thing in his toolbox i th think that he was uh it, kq9p is he on the meeting is he in here? No. Uh, the rundown he gave me was that he wasn't interested in it because it introduces a single point of failure. Um, there's already redundancy. There's already better tech that exists. And uh, ultimately, you have people that aren't trained in radio. One of the edges that ham radio operators have is communication protocols. Uh, if you get a lot of people on there who aren't trained, it's going to be a train wreck. Um, that being said, it has found use during hurricane seasons. It gets very popular every hurricane season. Um, the Cajun Navy has used it for rescue operations, uh, for assisting emergency responders. It's become useful for welfare checks um, and um, preparation, preparation for the you know for the storm approaching. And uh, if you're interested in listening in, just for like a ground truthing kind of thing for it, it works great for that. I usually leave it on just to kind of hear what's going on down there and, and get a story outside of the media. Um, so with that, before I get to a hands-on demonstration of it, I just want to kind of open it up and make sure everybody's on the same page. I'd like to, to make sure everybody's uh, understanding what we're doing before we go on to using it. So are there any questions about it? No? Okay. So with that, I'm going to start video on my screen and stop the screen sharing. And that should throw you down right to the radio. Everybody sees that well? What you're looking at here is an Android phone. Um, there's nothing great about it. You don't have to have this device to experience network radio. There's no reason you can't use your cell phone. There's no reason you can't use your iPhone or your Android phone to download these apps. So don't be intimidated by this. It is nothing more than an Android phone. Uh, but of course, one of the core tenets of ham radio is asking, how can I spend money on this? And that's exactly what this is. It's just special hardware because it comes with a push to talk button. Uh, and I'll go over the hardware here. The battery, you've got two slim, SIM slots. You can do uh, multi-cell networks, uh, GSM, GSM, CDMA, uh, 3G, 2G, 4G, uh, and of course your memory card. You're going to notice pretty similar uh, aspects to any other phone, camera, LED, programming port. Everybody's seen this on the HT. Um, charging ports. USB charging port down here. Uh, programmable buttons. Each one of these buttons is addressable. And one odd thing I want to point out, this antenna right here, it is SMA antenna, but it's for the GPS. So it, it doesn't work on RF. This particular model does not work on RF. Uh, with network radio, you can get a multitude of different hardware options. You can get HTs, base units, um, hybrid units now, which are basically a, a 
the best of both worlds, a cell phone with a UHF, VHF radio built in. It may have DMR. I think um, RF Finder has a new B1, which is uh, everything all at one. is 4G, LTE, 5G, uh, DMR, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, everything all built into one package, and it currently runs for about a $1,000 on gigaparts. Um, so there's uh, certainly some some options out there. But the great thing about it is that your existing phone works. And I hope that everybody uh, kind of leaves this meeting and, and plays with it a little bit. So don't get caught up on the uh, on the, the uh, specifics of this radio. I just want to go over some of the apps with you. Um, if you are interested in this radio, it's going to be Wi-Fi only, cell phone bands only. Um, about 200 bucks, maybe 300 bucks. Uh, with heavy data usage, I'll use about 200 meg a month. Uh, but let's get to the nitty gritty. So um, everything else is gonna look pretty familiar for Android users. You're gonna notice Netflix, Play Store, all this, scan their radios. This is what I use for my APRS. And here's kind of the meat and potatoes of it. And I wanna go down each one of these individually to show you how much of a, um, a variety you get. Uh, can I skip over Echolink? Do, do most people here have a good grasp of that? Does anybody want to take a look at that? No, the, the, the short of it is that Echolink allows you to connect to uh, local repeaters with the Echolink node. Uh, that brings it to you through the power of the internet. And this push to talk button right here keys up just like a regular radio. Everything you say is going to go out from this via Wi-Fi, via LTE, show up at the repeater, and then go out over the air. So from that, you know, in that capacity, you're going to need to be licensed. All right. TeamSpeak is another one. TeamSpeak started out as a video game software that would allow players to speak with each other. And along came I IRN, which is International, International Radio Network. We'll just kind of jump into this. It's going to tell you to turn Vox off, but you'll kind of look right here. See IRN channels. Some of these are RF uh, for All Star. So if you want to connect to the UK hub, they use a lot of All Star there. Um, you're going to be using this and coming out over the air right through the internet, and it all happens right there in that app. Uh, let's talk about Peanut, which is probably one of my favorites. Peanut is set up by rooms. So you have a push to talk button here. Again, you can use the one on the right on the side. These rooms set up for English or French are confined within the Peanut app. These are on their servers. They've got a computer set back in their server room somewhere. But if you look up here, you also see DMR, DCS. For those of you that do DSAR, you'll start recognizing some of those. Um, and it, it, it's a massive list. So Soda, you recognize this is a room specifically for summits on the air. Your talk groups, uh, you're going to have DMR. You're going to start seeing more D-Star, your reflectors down here, XR. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll even come to Yezu System Fusions. So again, it's going out over the air. You'll need to follow your hand protocols, but you're using it right from your cell phone. And um, if you're wondering, I just can scroll through this list and just show you how massive it is. There's a lot of people on that. Um, I wanna spend the most time on this app right here called Zello. And this is an application that started as a PC-based uh, push to talk program in 2007. So about 2017, it had about 100 million Register users. Uh, it offered enterprise solutions, subscription based, commercial focused offerings, and it's probably the most uh, popular app out of all of these. It works based on channels. So, whether you want to call it a channel or room, you can have multiple peers in the same room. And I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. This is your room layout, it's going to look the same for each one. You're just going to turn your room on and you get a little push to talk button right there. You can see all of your users in that room. So basically what you're looking at is a, is a visual aid for anybody in that room. 
right? Um, I, I would I would say peer to peer is really where Zello shines, but if you're keying it up and you're directing to um, to one person, you're almost wasting it, given that the rooms exist. Um, and if we're go, going to go back in here, there's probably a room for every imaginable uh, interest. So for Charlottesville area scanners or Charlottesville, Virginia, they have their own rooms. I think um, KK4SHO administrates one of those. Uh, network radios, uh, it has 115 people in it. And there's uh, network radios, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, there's also a radio network, a little bit backwards, but the same principle. And you can, again, leave these running all the time. You're gonna hear audio from that room. You turn it off, you're not going to hear any audio from it. Um, so I don't want to get too far into the nitty gritty of it. I'd like to open it up to discussions because I, I get the feeling you guys are going to have better questions than anything that I could think of to add in here. Um, so with that, I'll throw it back to Ed and you can kind of uh, take us into a Q&A. If, uh, if people would uh, pull up the participants tab and use the little uh, blue hold up your hand button. Uh, we did have somebody that did have their hand up with a, with a question. They've taken it down again, uh, but Ben, do you wanna jump in and ask a question? Actually, uh, it was a, gonna be a comment. I, was, I wasn't sure if everyone knew to go to a, a different camera than the active speaker to see what, uh, to, to see the actual phone screen because that took me a moment. Um, but I, I will actually ask a question while, while we're at it. Um, Michael, you'd mentioned that uh, these things, a lot of them are working via peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking. I'm assuming that's through the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the existing Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that are on these devices. That, that's correct. Um, there are a couple apps that exist. Uh, like I said, FireChat was one of them. That's been discontinued. I'm not sure of um, many other popular apps that use Bluetooth mesh networking. Uh, you, you're much more likely to find something that works on an internet server. And whether you access that through your cell phone tower or your Wi-Fi is completely up to you. Um, finding one that that is popular enough to really be useful and uses Wi-Fi kind of an ad hoc connection peer to peer from device to device, that's going to be much less likely. They are out there. They're just not useful without the user base. Okay. And then modes wise, is this mostly uh, phone and text or are, is there a variety of other things out there? Uh, I think you're going to find, for the most part, it is going to be phone and text. Um, you know, with something like Zello, it, let's actually, we can use it right now. Um, my wife, I can send her a text. I can push this um, text over. I can actually come in here and type a message. Uh, I could take the camera up and send her a picture that way. So it, in some ways, it's, it's probably more like a... Um, like any other messaging app you have with the ability to send voice comments, if that makes sense. Uh, again, each app is going to be different. Each app is going to have its own kind of pros and cons. Um, it, as far as network radio uh, is concerned, it's probably more important to kind of realize each app rather than network radio as a whole. Uh, it's an interesting concept to, to think about. Does that answer your question? I think so, yes. Okay. Thank you. Michael, I'm not, uh, not seeing any other hands up right now, so let me ask you one. I can yep. see how you could do Zello to talk to unlicensed people, or a lot of these systems to talk to unlicensed people by basically making it so that it's essentially just sort of a clearinghouse for passing information through the internet. Sure. Once you start hooking up to DMR, once you start hooking up to repeaters, once you start hooking up to, to uh, well, uh, to fusion, now all of a sudden there's the potential for something coming through your handheld to be going out over the airwaves. I know that uh, Echo Link requires you to send in a copy of your license to them so they can verify it before you're allowed to do that. What goes with these other ones? 
Well, the, the same uh, the same idea applies. Uh, Peanut, you're going to send in a verification with TeamSpeak. There's really no verification, at least when I signed up for it, there was no verification required. Um, the only thing I can say about that, that it's the ability to send it out over the airwaves has been there. And you know, whether it's been abused is, uh, I think it's kind of up to them. I'm sure that they would cut it off if it were abused. But given that it hasn't been abused, I would wonder if maybe a lot of people just simply don't know about it. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you can kind of connect to it without having to, to sign in or put your, um, you know, put your uh, call sign in or anything. So there's a lot of question about who administrates it. Um, and it does change. So for example, California, uh, I'm sorry, uh, North Carolina has a, uh, a network down towards Charlotte that was connected to this at one time and they actually had to shut it down because uh, unlicensed people were using it. Uh, I'm sure at some point in time, each network would have its own administrator. Um, TeamSpeak's probably a, a bad example because there needs to be that kind of top down view, like you said with Echolink or Peanut, rather than having each one administer uh, its own self. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anything stopping people from kind of sending that out now, no more than it would be, you, you know, stopping people from buying a radio and, and using it without a license as it is now. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that they would stand out like a sore thumb because they wouldn't be using their call signs. They wouldn't be using sort of ham operating techniques and, and so forth. But that, that, that one scares me. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, I, you know, like I said, it's, it's existed. It exists right now. Um, I think, Within the community, you find a lot of people that are, are pretty understanding. Within Zello, uh, you'll find people that actually use Zello-based call signs. Um, so uh, you find a good mix of people in there that, that are maybe using you know, their um, overseas call signs, or maybe they're using their American call signs, or maybe they're using their Zello-based call signs. And this is something that you are assigned arbitrarily by the channel administrator. Um, I don't know that I would, I don't want to say don't take it seriously, but you're going to be a lot more relaxed if you're playing with something like Zello or, or uh, anything on network radio. I think it's more of a, a relaxed atmosphere. So, and that may be what makes it uh, not as desirable, not as useful for emergency communications too. There, there tends to be a lot of confusion uh, and you, you know, download Zello, you can hear it during hurricane season. You hear a lot of people chatting back and forth and there's no, uh, real organization to the conversation. So there, there's something to be desired there. Anybody Any else? Any other questions, raise your hand. Or, or just go ahead and talk. Um, I want you guys to, to know that this is not something that you have to be active with. If you want to, um, to just kind of experience what you're doing, go to the Play Store or go to, uh, I guess, the App Store, and you can download these. N none of these cost money, so you can download and listen to it. Um, if you just want to go on Zello and listen to the conversations or go on the Peanut and, and kind of get an idea of what you're running into, do it. There's absolutely nothing stopping you. There's no cost involved. There's no special equipment. It's just out there for the taking, and as, as ham radio operators, I don't see any reason not to kind of jump into the next frontier with it and just play around with it, have fun with it. I would uh, worry about the, you're talking about the next frontier. And of course, maybe at 88, <laughs> I'm too late to adapt. But you know, I'm thinking about primarily in, in using it as an adjunct or in a, a something, something of value in an emergency situation. And I would kind of, I'm kind of right now, at least, thinking about walking into the um, uh, event control room, and there are 16 phones there, and each one of them is, has a different phone company running it with <laughs> different <laughs> kinds of of uh, phone numbers. You know, it, it would seem to me it's very, it would be difficult to, as you keep talking about the administrator, of course, and I understand that that would be a, a problem if you have 
and say something, you know, the people familiar walking in and volunteers walking in and each one of them is a nerd on one of these six or seven different apps. Do you want to comment on that a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, you know, I think from the phone company side, if you want to look at something like T-Mobile or Verizon, it really doesn't matter which one you're connected to. Um, as a matter of fact, this one right here is on Project Phi, which is a virtual network. Um, the only thing you're using that connection for is to connect back to Peanut servers or, or Zello servers or, or whichever one you're using. Um, as for, I think if you kind of look at some of these, um, I'll just kind of scroll down and, and maybe click on this one right here. This is one of the reflectors, and I know it's hard to see there. It says multi-mode reflector. Um, and you're going to start to notice that here's one with a talk group on it, an all-star node, and Echolink. The line is already so blurry between what is radio, what is digital, what these different modes. Um, and quite often they're, they're all kind of interconnected anyway. So I think really the only thing missing from what you were talking about with that kind of event control is, is probably organization. And, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's uh, probably why KQ9P didn't see such an immediate value in it for emergency communications and, um, and rightfully so. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, on the flip side of that, how do you uh, how do you get that organization? Well, you, you get experience. So if it's bringing more people into the hobby and they're able to uh, to kind of practice their skill set without jumping into it head first, or if in the case of my wife, if they're uh, practicing it and playing with it and enjoying it to the point where they want to to kind of take that more professional jump into ham radio, then I, I say all the better for them. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, Benjamin has, a, uh, has another question there. Sorry, yeah, as a, another uh, follow on. Um, you, it, you'd mentioned that uh, this has been particularly attractive to folks uh, in situations pending emergencies like before hurricanes. Um, what is it that makes this different from just conventional chatting apps, you know? I, I chat or, uh, you know, your Snapchat or your regular instant messenger programs. Um, what is it that things like Zello and stuff can do? Because uh, presumably the weak link here is you still have to get back to the internet to get back to somebody's server to then talk out to everybody. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. You, you do still have to have that connection there. Um, again, why it's not very useful for emergency communications. I don't know that there's any huge advantage over uh, traditional messaging apps. I do think there's kind of a different beast here. Uh, one, if you're looking at something like Zello or even Peanut, you're going to speaking you're going to be speaking to people uh, semi randomly. So it'd be no different than going out to a repeater rather than calling somebody directly. Um, Again, it may be just kind of a feel for me. It's very convenient for, for me if I want to speak to my wife just to kind of hit that push to talk button rather than, you know, scrolling up and, and uh, dialing her directly. Um, I think she has a shortcut right there on her screen, so she can just look at her home screen and do that for Zello. I don't know that there's any huge advantage one way or other uh, other than the community aspect of it. I think you're going to find a lot of people – that just kind of enjoy radio or enjoy the um, enjoy the camaraderie, if you will. Sure. Um, Michael, uh, let me let me suggest uh, one reason why KQ9P wasn't probably that interested in this from emergency communications is the Aries focus tends to be on amateur radio emergency communications. I could see that somebody who was an emergency manager could use Zello in an emergency. But if the internet's working and the cell phone system is working and all the yeah. telephones are up, well, then you don't need amateur radio emergency stuff. Sure. When all sure. those things go away, <laughs> that you need the amateur radio. 
So sure. I, think, I think that's probably sort of the big issue is we got lots of things we can do as long as the telephones and the internet are working. Um, one, of the, one of the things we initially looked at was how do you incorporate these into a Bluetooth or, or some similar like a LoRaWAN mesh network? Um, could you create this infrastructure without the cell phones or the, the Wi-Fi or anything else being uh, available? And uh, I think there were just kind of too many setbacks, too many obstacles to overcome to make it efficient, uh, especially when other technology exists to, like you said, to already do what ex you're trying to do with it. So a lot of reasons why it didn't really appeal to, if you want to say professional emergency management. Um, but for, for the layman, like I said, there's still uses for it. A lot of people prefer it, especially during hurricane season. It, it, it gains so much popularity. I think during the, um, the wildfires out west, it gained a little popularity too. Um, but again, you're, you're looking at situations where people just want to communicate and, and check on each other where they may have Wi-Fi, but cell signals may be down. Um, so not every phone works on Wi-Fi now. It, it should, but the, um, there's still, like I said, there's still uses for it, but I don't know that I would say it's as, uh, as serious as ham radio. Still a lot of fun though. Hey, Mike, are you at a good point to wrap it up? Yeah, I absolutely am. If there are no more questions, I'll wrap it up and, and just kind of remind everybody, go to the Play Store, play with it. There's nothing stopping you. There's no cost. The worst thing that happens is you try a new app, you don't like it. The best thing is that you find something else fun to play with. So, okay. And well, thank you very much. Sure, sure. And we could, you know, 